Okay, uh, today I want to demonstrate how to use the sketch tools to create 2D sketches in SolidWorks. So first of all, go ahead, create a new file. Make sure that you open the parts. And as I said before, you need to select one of the three planes from here. Um, in this case, to keep it simple, I use the front plane and then click sketch to activate the sketch and now you are good to create the 2D sketches in SolidWorks. So again the net the, the second tab is a sketch tab so you can create your sketches from here. The other tool that is available to you if you right click you can create the sketch from here. But um, as a demonstration for the first time uh, you click on the plane and then sketch. There are multiple tools, uh, basic tools available here that enable you to create 2D sketches. The first one is the line tool. With the line tool or with the simple line tool you can create uh, lines in different ways. You can create vertical line you can create horizontal line or you can create uh, lines with different angles so whatever angle that you choose but when you move your uh, your mouse you can see that it tries to identify some relations uh, with the other uh, points or other lines that are available inside your SOLIDWORKS sketch area. So you can use those guidelines to create your lines. Uh, the other thing that you can see is a difference of the difference between the black and the blue line. The black lines means that they are defined by some sort of relations. For example, this line, when you click on that, you can see uh, some green uh, icons. And these green icons define the relations. So in this case, we have a vertical relation. You can see the vertical relation here. And the other thing is coincident with the origin. So these are the two relations that define this line. Uh, when you click on this line, it also starts from the origin. So there is a coincident with the origin. And then this one, this line is horizontal. So we see the horizontal line here or horizontal relation here. But this one, when you click on that, you don't see anything or any existing relations here. That means that there is no relation, but you can always define the relation. The other thing that uh, is available on all the sketch tools are the parameters that define the sketch shape. For a simple line, there are two parameters. First, the length, the length of the line. Let's say that you decide to make it four inches and then the angle of the line so in this case we have the horizontal line so it's 0 0 0 0.0, 0. and for this one also uh, we can define the length let's say four inches and then since it's a vertical line the angle is 90 degree for this one you can define the length let's say four inches and you can define the angle because it's not defined as a relation here. So let's say 30 degree angle. So there are parameters that you can choose to select or to define the line. Uh, the other thing that you can do with the lines are converting them to the construction line or keeping them as solid lines for uh, making 3D models. If you turn or check the construction box here, 
it creates a dashed line which means that this line is only used for the construction guide so it's not a part of the solid modeling uh, uh, sketch uh, you can also use the infinite length which is obvious what it does in most cases we don't need to do that otherwise we need to really have an extremely large and small elements in our design we can fix and add a relation as a fixed uh, item here so it turns to black because we define the relation for that and you can always modify the relations by right click and deleting some of them or all of them you can select and remove the lines and then you can basically create a center line then you can create the midpoint line the midpoint line allows you uh, seems that the other feature uh, the other feature is the midpoint the other uh, tool is the midpoint line and it is useful when you want to start with a certain point and you want to keep that point at the center of your line so for example here i started from the origin and i can create another vertical line that starts from the origin or i don't know a line with particular angle that starts from the origin in all cases it keeps the center uh, as a midway for creation of this uh, these lines uh, the other tool is the rectangle tool and there are different options here I'm just uh, talking about the two important ones uh, the corner rectangle when we want to start from a certain point as a corner of the rectangle in this case I start from the origin and as you can see we can change or define the length of uh, the sides let's say 7 and then 4 and also we can turn some or all of the lines to a construction uh, mode by selecting and hitting the construction so it converts this one to a construction line uh, again as you see uh, we have two black lines and two blue lines the black lines means that they have some sort of relations or constraints so for example this one has a horizontal relation and this one has a vertical relation but this line well they they both have the horizontal relation but probably the difference between that is <clears throat> because they don't have any uh, relation with uh, the center or the origin you can also create a center rectangle and you start from the origin in this case it could be any point in your work area uh, and you can also change the dimensions from here so 5 by 7 and uh, you can define that dimension but as you can see 
all of these are blue which means that you can easily modify them and you can accidentally also change them by grabbing or changing uh, the lines or the points um, even if you define them from here it doesn't mean that they stay there for the rest of your work so uh, the thing that you can do to fix them is going to a sketch and use the smart dimensioning tool so if you use a smart dimensioning tool you can click on them and let's say seven and a half define the length and let's say four and a half and click OK to fix them in this case they stay seven and a half by four and a half for the rest of whatever you do with SOLIDWORKS otherwise you go back double click and change that here for example you decide later that you want to change it to eight by five so you can double click and change that otherwise if you move the points or the lines they don't move and it's a great way if you know exactly the dimensions uh, the circle tool simple you can select from the center grab it and create a circle you can define the diameter or the radius of the circle from here so in this case it works with the radius uh, so let's say three inches radius you can also uh, use a random point on your screen and then uh, define the radius as well as the accurate uh, place for the center point so in this case I, I say let's say five and seven and it just changes the location of the center point uh, you also have the perimeter uh, circle you have multiple options for creating arc uh, you can create a center point arc tangent arc or three point arc this is something that I use a lot uh, as a demonstration let's say you have a line it has start point end point and this is a great place to create a three point arc that means that you need to select the start point the end point and you need to click somewhere on your screen to define the third point and you can always change that and define that here so again you have the option to define the radius of this arc here let's say uh, 2.5 and then you can decide uh, when it starts when it stop i mean the start point the end point and the center point you can create the polygons uh, you just need to change the number of sides and if you want the polygon for the construction uh, you can pick the center of the polygon and also the angle that starts the polygon so in this case I would start with the center and I keep it horizontal so it means that there is no particular angle here uh, and then I can create my polygon if you want to change your polygon you can probably use a different number here and then you can also move that and see 
how it changes the angle, 90 degree angle versus zero. And you can al always change the angle and uh, also the size of uh, your polygon. We have the SP lines that enable us to create uh, curved shapes and curved lines. We can use the free SP line to create something like this, or we can use the style SP line that defines the curve with the location of the points. You can always change the SP line and modify them. Uh, for example, you can change the location of the point, you can use the handles to change the SP line, and uh, there are different ways for the modifications. We have ellipses, uh, partial ellipses, and some other tools available here. Again, you need to decide about the center and then a smaller and larger diameter. This is the larger diameter, smaller diameter, uh, let's say three by one. And then you can always change the center of the ellipse. Uh, the other tool that's available and very useful are is the sketch fillet and sketch chamfer. Uh, to use a sketch feature and sketch chamfer, you need to have two lines. Uh, this case for the demonstration, I create two lines with one uh, point <coughs> here. So for the sketch tool, uh, for the fillet tool you need to select that and you need to either select this point or you hold your control key to select these two lines so i already selected the point i can demonstrate that again so I'll use the fillet tool select the corner point and then you can change this to something bigger or smaller and it highlights the, the location of how, how it would look after applying the fillet. You can apply that or again I can select this line, hold the control key to select the second line and then use the fillet tool. Again you can always change the fillet from here and then it's okay to fix it. Chamfer tool, same thing. You can either select the corner or select these two. Uh, 0.5. Uh, create a 0 0.5, 0 0.5, or you can make it equal distance of uh, uh, or if you want to make it different. Uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.
or you can create the equal distance. There are other tools like or uh, sketch tools like points when you want to define something you can create the points measure the relationship that exists between those two those points And then based on that, you can create your shape. Uh, also, you can type with the text tool. If you want to add a logo or specific information about the product, that is another helpful feature. Um, and there are lots of tools on the sketch. If you go here, under uh, customize and command sketch there are a bunch of other tools available for the sketch however they are not shown on the ribbon toolbar because you can't fit everything here but let's say that you're using something that is not here you can go ahead and grab it drag and drop it here in your ribbon toolbar and make it available. Um, just as an example, if you want to use a segment tool, you can drag and drop it here. Um, uh, to demonstrate how we work with the trim tool, convert entities or offset, I probably need to create something for the demonstration. Uh, let me start with a rectangle. So I created a rectangle and then for trimming, let's say that I want to trim this line here. You can go to the trim, use the trim tool closest, select that line and it removes that line. Uh, you can also use the power trim. To trim more parts and is not you need to have a good control particularly if you have many lines but it is very useful and, uh, and helpful when you have many pieces that you want to remove quickly uh, the offset for using the offset we need to have uh, something that we offset them. For example, I created a rectangle and I want to offset some pieces of this rectangle. So I select them, hold the control key, use the offset tool, and then define the amount of offset, let's say uh, 0.5 inches. You can see that you can offset it uh, from outside in, or you can reverse the offset inside out you can select the chain and it automatically adds the other pieces and creates a chain to complete this offset or you can remove that so when you are happy with the amount of distance and also uh, the chain or uh, the direction then you can hit ok to create this offset The convert entity is very useful when you want to convert and copy one sketch on one side or one surface of a 3D object on the other surface or other side of the 3D object. Uh, so it's not something that we explore at this time, but later we can cover that.
uh, there are different tools like mirrors and sketch pattern for the demonstration of how the mirror works you can have some elements and let's say that you want to exactly copy them on the other side so you need to create a line and this line works as a mirror and you mirror these elements around or about the center line so you select the items that you want to mirror go to mirror entities these are selected here if they are not here you can you can remove them by right click clear selections and you can also add them again or you can add part of them make sure the copy is checked and then select the next box and you need to select the mirror line or the mirror about in this case the center line is the mirror line so I select that it automatically copies those items on the other side and you can check that the good thing is about uh, the mirror when you move the mirror or when you change the location of the items it automatically applies those changes on the mirrored item items uh, one useful feature is the linear sketch pattern let's say that you have an element and you design this element in a particular way and it's hard to do that again and again uh, just as a demonstration and example Let's say that you have a particular shape and you want to repeat that. It is hard to do all of this uh, process again, again, and again. Let's say that you need to copy 100 times and you want to have a certain distance uh, vertically and horizontally. It's just uh, painful if you want to do that for every item. So a good thing is about using uh, the linear sketch tools. You can select uh, the elements that you want to repeat or you want to repeat in different directions you can define the number of repetitions uh, you can define the distance from here let's say two inches distance horizontally or maybe more again you can increase the number and you can also repeat them vertically if uh, you apply the second direction uh, for the second direction you need to increase the number to whatever you like and then increase that to whatever distance that you want and then you can just 
the OK, and then you have a repetition of the item. Um, you can uh, remove some or un hide and unhide some of the items that make clutter by going here. For example, I just want to hide uh, the dimensions so I can hide them from here. Uh, sometimes we want to repeat the item around a specific uh, point. Let's say that we have a point here, whatever. Uh, we have a point in here and we want to copy and duplicate this around the center. So we can select them and use the circular sketch pattern. So for the circular sketch pattern, we uh, select the element <coughs> for the point. We need to assign the point. In that case, it automatically uh, found a different point here. But let's say that I wanted to use this point. I remove that one and assign this new point and also you can define the number of uh, instances from here whatever that you want let's say <clears throat> 30 repetitions uh, you can change this let's say that you want to repeat in half so 180 degree or if you want a full repeat a four circular pattern 360 degrees and then you can hit the OK and <clears throat> you can see that uh, these items are repeated around the circle around the center point So let me go back to my original shape here. There are other different tools that are helpful when we want to move the object. For example, uh, we want to move these items in a certain direction or for uh, a certain distance. So you can select them, move the entities. You can see all of these items, all of these lines, curves are selected here. And you can see from from to two, which means that you need to select uh, the start point. Let's say the start point here, and then you move that to another place. Uh, shapes the the shape becomes funny because there are lots of constraints. As you can see, there are lots of relations in uh, green icons so <clears throat> they define the relation and we can't easily move them unless we removed all of those uh, relations and constraints that's why the shape becomes funny when I move them um, you can also move that from certain point to another point, say two by five. Again, shapes becomes funny because uh, there is a constraint here. So it doesn't work the way that we want to work. <clears throat> In that case, we have to remove all of these constraints. and every other thing not every but we need to check if there is any constraint that 
prevent us from copying or mirroring not mirroring but uh, moving the item so it should work fine now so I try to move that again see what happens move entity let's say two seems that there is there are more constraints <clears throat> or fix items so that is an inspection uh, so as a quick demonstration I would like to move forward with a simpler shape so let's say that we have a circle we want to move it you can move it from uh, one point to another point sorry one point to another point or you can move it with a specific number here let's say two and three So I'll select at the center point, move that two and three. So you can either move that from here or move that with certain numbers. You can copy, you can rotate, and you can scale uh, the certain item. The rotate doesn't make sense when we have a circle but for the demonstration of the scale you need to select the center point for scaling uh, the most important uh, center point for the scaling would be the center of the circle and then you can uh, enlarge it or make it smaller by adding a number here let's say one point half and what it needs to be scaled is the circle. Scale point is here. So select the circle here, entities to be scaled, and the center for the scaling, and then enter the number here. Or it could be, let's say, 75%.